So here's my latest toy. I've been wanting one of these for decades and I finally lashed out and bought one. It's a 3 KVA Variac. I'll take it out of the box. Now I've just weighed it also. It comes in at 11 kilograms. It's a fairly hefty beast. It's got puts on the bottom. Knob's a little wonky. I don't know if it's the knob itself or the shaft. Maybe it's just not centered on the shaft because it's got a there's a flat on the shaft and maybe it's pushed too far across. Might be able to do something about it. It doesn't have a input power cord or output sockets, just terminals and earth down there. So something has to be done about that maybe mounted on a some sort of a base plate like that and then some sort of arrangement where power outlets and if you're going that far I mean this this mucking around with um, mains power introduces a, a number of related issues um, so I'm trying to look at all of them together and come up with a decision on what to do um, so if you're going to have that then and you have to build a uh, mounting fixture for it then you may as well have a safety switch ground bolt interrupter residual current detector whatever circuit breakers something along those lines so this gets a bit bigger uh, and the output voltmeter on these things is apparently notoriously inaccurate. So I've had these couple of things for about two years now, waiting for a good use to put them to. And this is certainly a good use for one of them. They're AC multifunction meters. Uh, put mains in and a load and it shows you the voltage, the current, the power and the energy over time. They're powered off the mains so they need some voltage to run and uh, apparently it, it, it says 80 volts but apparently they'll work down to about 65. But there is a modification you can do. I've got another one here that's been opened. Looking at the insides this capacitor if it's removed from one of the input terminals and supplied independently you can put the raw mains that would go to the input of the uh, variac into there also which provides power to the meter so it doesn't need so it'll be able to measure down to whatever comes out of this down to ground or full power ground down to zero volts uh, so it'd be nice to incorporate that in here as well. So this thing's getting a bit bigger, isn't it? Uh, and then maybe it should all go into a nice enclosure like this style of thing. Slightly bigger one. You can make a cutout for the, the meter there. Uh, this is all still up in the air. I'm thinking aloud here. <coughs> now, as well as uh, this replacing the inaccuracy of that. These things have their own issues. As I mentioned, the um, need for at least 80 volts input, but that can be circumvented. Uh, but they got some pretty bad reviews on, e on Amazon, I saw, uh, saying that they don't work for long and they get hot and melt the case. And there's a current sense resistor there, which is apparently, I haven't had a close look, but on a, one of the videos on the tubes, it says... Uh, it's one milliohm, uh, and at 20 amps, which is the maximum current this thing can carry, that one milliohm represents four watts. Now, I think that's a 2512 style package, maybe not, but I've got to look, have a closer look and measure it. Uh, it's probably good for about a watt, and 0.4 watt 
dissipation at 20 amps is within its range and it shouldn't get too hot at that but uh, maybe it could benefit by having that replaced with something external that can carry higher power and not get hot also it's probably only a 5% resistor so a better more accurate external shunt might be good and along with maybe a, a trim pot so that it can be calibrated again I'm just thinking of possibilities here so first of all I want to just try a bit of testing uh, there's videos of how to connect these things to the Variac um, they're pretty bodgy efforts with super glue on there like that and the descriptions are pretty poor they you know join this wire to there join this wire to the green join that wire to the hot side of that you know there's a lot of gibberish what I really want to see is a wiring diagram and they weren't really forthcoming with that but uh, I'm going to open this up and uh, do a proper wiring diagram of it so here it is it's uh, it's simpler than some other Variax because it doesn't have a power switch, it doesn't have input cord and output sockets and they're associated earthing wiring so it's very straightforward. It's AC comes into the main winding, the wiper arm comes off through a circuit breaker to the voltmeter to the output with a common neutral rail. Uh, looking at that in here, there's the common neutral from X to X. The A goes to a point most of the way around the circumference, but not all the way. Uh, the wiper arm, which comes here, it's got a carbon brush going to a heat sink because I imagine the carbon brush will have a bit of resistance that will get hot. Uh, the wiper arm goes to circuit breaker and out to the small A terminal and the voltmeter just sits across A and X, small A and, and small X. The panel meter, these things, if we, if we label these terminals 1, 2, 3, 4 going down Again, there's a common active side. The neutral side is broken by the sense resistor for the current, which goes into the panel meter circuit. And the voltage sense, not sure if it measures relative to there or there, hopefully on this side, on the output side. And the this capacitor and resistor form part of the power supply circuit which is normally taken from the incoming AC on pin 3 but it can be cut and supplied externally so that it's independent of the incoming voltage and it can therefore measure a much lower than 65 volts coming in and you do something like this wiring it all up uh, cut that connection to pin 3 and run it straight off the incoming AC then no matter what you set the variac at the meter is getting the full mains input and this is what I want to set up um, a, a load I'll probably use a heater element or a stove heater element I'm going to put in a my own sense resistor in here as well measure the voltage on that so that uh, and, and measure the resistance accurately so I'll be able to check the accuracy of the current readings coming out of this and the voltage readings of course too for both the panel meter and the built-in meter of the Variac okay so I'll put all that together and do some testing oh, while I'm on this uh, when the wipers around here of course we get zero volts coming out and when it's round here where the incoming where the incoming voltage is inserted which is not all the way up the coil there's a, a bit more around here so when the wipers there you'll get the uh, same voltage as the incoming but here when you're going to this area you'll get higher 
then the incoming voltage. So you might probably get up to say 280 volts with a 240 volt input. We'll see about that as well. Okay, I'll build up my test circuit. Okay, here's my Variac and power meter test setup. Mains comes in here to 20 amp dual pole circuit breaker going across to a uh, ground pole interrupter safety switch thing then into the Variac comes out to the power meter and to a power outlet and in that I've got plugged another power meter going to and I'm using this toaster oven as a dummy load let's turn it on and see the voltage on that meter going up and at about 70 odd volts at about 70 volts this meter kicks in or starts flashing below that by about 80 volts it's pretty stable okay we can see the voltage coming out of the variac there and here now so I'll wind this up to the point where it starts to work 80 volts set it at uh, 91 pretty good agreement 90 volts 120, they're in pretty good agreement. 180, go all the way to 250, and pretty good accuracy agreement there. Also on this meter, well, it's showing 240. I've also got this bit of mag manganin resistance wire, which was supposed to be about point. Uh, six milli ohms. I was going to use that to measure current, but I cannot get a reliable resistance reading of that thing. Even though I've now got five meters that are capable of doing four wire low ohms measurement, I, I'm not getting consistent results. So I'm going to have to um, go back to the drawing board on that, read some manuals, and check my wiring. But can't can't do much with that at the moment. Okay. So now let's give it some load. I'll turn this toast, toaster oven thing on. We're drawing 5 amps, 5.05. And this thing says 40 down there. Not sure what, what I'm doing with this thing. I think that's saying 245 volts. Okay, they both agree there. 4.9 bit of a discrepancy on the amps. And the power, there's a bit of a discrepancy. 1200 watts. I've also got a couple of crappy, crappy clamp meters. These are di real cheap. Let's see what they think. Four point nine amps. Oh, not hugely different to what that one's saying. Pretty good agreement with this one. And we have yet another. So um, voltage wise it seems pretty accurate there, um, but current I can't be sure, so I may as well trust that, I mean the voltage is good, for the moment I'll trust the current, so it's not a bad thing by the look of it, I think they're about uh, $11. Now what I'm thinking is getting this PowerPoint, that thing, some of that functionality and putting it all onto this, maybe below it. So. A housing maybe that high underneath this and uh, so it'll still be the same area just a bit higher and, and could could even go a bit crazy and put a motor a geared motor onto the 
shaft of this and remote control it. But that's one possibility anyway, but uh, yeah, I'll leave room in whatever enclosure I build underneath for that possibility. But it seems like a pretty good unit. Uh, what did it cost me? Uh, can't remember exactly off the top of my head. But uh, it was, it was on, from AliExpress and it was the best value I could find in 240 volt uh, Variax. The, the, the 120 volt ones seem quite cheap, some of them. Max, max voltage I can get out of it 276. That's with a load if I turn this off. 285 with the uh, with no load. If I turn on the load, it drops down to 276, but that's drawing 1500 watts. So, there we have it Variax and power meters. A nice combination. Okay, I've got the toaster oven running again at as much power as I can get out of it. Uh, with the Variac wound up to 250 volts, so drawing about 12, well, depending on who you believe, 1260 watts or 1220. I'm doing letting it run for a while so that I can see what the how hot the current sense resistor in this thing gets because some reports talk of them melting the case, so maybe it's um, of too low a power. And if that if that is the case, then I could look at uh, extending wires from that to a, a higher rated sense resistor and possibly all built into a case at the bottom of this thing. So I'll let it run for 10 minutes or so and then check the temperature on that resistor. Okay, and it's been a while so we'll um, turn down the power, turn everything off. Feel that resistor on the other side of here. Okay, I have to spend a couple of minutes opening the box up to get to it. By that time, it might have cooled down a bit, so I'll reapply power and run the thing for a few more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> the air fault just tripped <laughs> because that touched that. So good to know they work, isn't it? All right, that's long enough. Let's turn all this off. And feel the temperature on this thing. Doesn't seem what doesn't even seem warm. That sensor resistor there doesn't seem warm. This one here, slightly warm. Actually, actually it's quite hot. This resistor gets quite hot. That's the part of the um, power supply. The resistor and that and that capacitor in series with the incoming mains to provide power to circuitry. So that's a candidate for moving off board into whatever enclosure I put this in underneath the Variac. Hmm. Maybe that's what they were talking about in the reviews that it overheated. In any case, um, once I can get some sort of reliable current measurement, I've got to look into this um, magnet and wire issue. But uh, it may be worthwhile replacing that resistor because that's probably only 5% tolerance. Might be able to get something more like 1%. Or maybe even use some of this stuff um, to get a more accurate current measurement. So looking at the possibilities for this guy, could take that off, but we'll leave an ugly gash, so it may as well be left there. Uh, these terminals are pretty safe as long as you don't undo them, and it does give you direct access to the input and output of the Variac. But looking underneath, uh, those foots could be removed, something built under here, some sort of enclosure which could have a, the RCD and main power switch plus power outlets on a couple of, maybe, well, maybe just one power outlet, one of those on one side. Uh, the, those RCD and main circuit breakers on this side. 
the little power meter this thing on the front along with a switch but it could be taken a bit further than that you could then on the back have a fan on the, on the back enclosure down here a fan blowing air into this in this space which can only go out through the variac to cool it so perhaps get a bit more power or certainly make this thing run a little bit easier but the other thing is see here as I turn the knob there's a screw there and it wouldn't be hard to attach some sort of a, a gear onto that with a stepper motor driving it to automate and, and, and limit switches on the limit switches on the um, end positions and have a computer controlled variac so we could automatically select voltages under program control don't know if I'll do that but I'll certainly leave room to allow for that hmm interesting possibilities I think that'll do for now catch you later